So this is the installation video for installing a pull-down resistor into an EVO 1 to 3 uh, ECU. So first step is to do is to take off the uh, the cover and then uh, once the cover is off we're going to take out the board from the uh, from the ECU housing. This is to get access at the data pins um, once the board has been removed. So now that the ECU board has been removed, we're going to take out our soldering iron. And uh, the one I have here is just a basic one from uh, Radio Shack here. It has two different settings, the uh, low and the high. So we're going to set it to the, uh, the high setting just to preheat the iron. And then we're going to get, uh, while that's preheating, we're going to get set up and start figuring out what pins we're going to need to look at. So if we look on here again, we can see that there is a power ground here and it also comes in at timing ground. That's pin number 26. If you look at 26, it's right here. This is the pin we're interested in. So that one's a nice short leap because we're going to be putting a resistor in between these two. So that's the pin I'm going to pick. You can pick a different ground if you like, but that's the one I'm going to pick for this demonstration. So we need to get our resistor and uh, there are different types of bands on these resistors. So I'm using a 10K ohm resistor. And you could tell because the brown means one, the black means zero, and then the orange means three. Times three, or 1,000, is the orange band. So that says this is a 10 kilo, kilo ohm resistor. And we can hook up our meter, select, ohms and we'll go to a 20k range by measuring about 9.6k 9.7 9.8 kilo ohm so that tells me that I read these numbers right on this resistor so now that we're looking here I mark the pin we're interested in with that now I just need to get the other pin, which is pin number 29, and if we or 26, sorry, correction. So if we look at number 26, it's showing it is right there. So it's the same thing, translates, looking at the bottom of the here, to this big guy over here. And you can kind of tell that it's going to be a power or ground because of the thickness of the pin. So that guy is going to be this one right here. So I'm going to mark that as well. So we need to connect a resistor between these two pins. Kind of something like this. But we also need to protect it. So we're going to use some heat shrink tubing. I have a bunch right here that you can find pretty much anywhere. You just have to make sure that it's thick enough to go around the resistor. So that it goes inside here. So what I decided to do was take a little bit of heat shrink tubing and then just pre put the uh, resistor inside so that just the pins are showing. Now I figured I could do this ahead of time and that way I just worry about soldering on the connectors and not worry about heat shrinking it to the tube. This heat shrink is a little bit too big. I might look through my other stock just to kind of find something a little bit smaller. You can see, uh, you can see the size there. It'll be quite a bit to shrink down. So I just got it, put it in the vise there, and I have a heat gun that I'm going to use to melt the melt it. So there you have it. It didn't shrink as much as I would like it to, but we'll take a look at it in a second after it cools off. Okay, so now we have the resistor here, and I'm just gonna take some pliers to be able to hold the resistor while I just desolder a bit of the pin. 
and it looks like it's not hot enough. So my uh, soldering gun has my soldering piece here has two different uh, different settings. So low and high. So I'm just gonna turn it up to the high setting because the low seems to be not quite good enough. So I'm just gonna wait for it to warm up and then we'll try this again. So I'll take this time while it's warming up to introduce some wick. This stuff here will actually take off solder. So I was using this before, but I'll just cut off the old piece. So if you need to clean up some of the solder, you can just move the resistor for now. And I'll just take a little bit and just kind of desolder it a bit, get rid of that old kind of old solder. Uh, looks like the iron's still not hot enough. Um, here I'll just tin the uh, soldering iron. So take some fresh solder. She's not hot enough at all. Okay, there you go. Now it's starting to beat a bit. So it's definitely getting warm. So let's just try touching it there. I need to add a bit of fresh solder. Okay. Then I'll clean it up a bit with the wick. Probably not the best soldering job in the world by any means, but should get the job done. And I'll solder the next bit. Okay, so there we go. It's on. Clean the soldering tip, shut off the iron. Hopefully that was in focus. So there we have it. So I got the uh, ECU bought back back on and you can kind of see the resistor tucked underneath there so you can see the pins and then the, uh, the resistors under there there's a little bit there's enough space for it to have room to breathe but definitely feel a lot more comfortable having the uh, the heat shrink tubing on you can see it right there so we'll uh, try putting this in the car reinstalling it all putting the cover back on and uh, try it out okay so here we are back in the car again I'm gonna try this out Try to connect. Okay, it says connected. Just look at the data log to uh, start stream. And as you can see, or maybe not see, packet INT, turn that on so that's in light blue. No spikes at all. That's it, it's fixed.